Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, today I have a project update video. Um, it's been about two weeks since my last update, so I do have some <laughs> new things to share. And if you haven't watched before, usually I share um, the normal, normal format. Um, finished objects, works in progress, and then acquisitions. I do have an acquisition today because I recently took a trip and so I bought some yarn um, while I was gone. So I will share that at the end or you can skip ahead. Um, and then when I share that, I'll talk a little bit about my trip as well. I went to Denver with some sweet friends of mine, um, sort of like a, a girl's trip and it was wonderful. And so I'll talk a little bit about that. Not a ton, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, okay, so I have finished objects. The first one is something I actually haven't shared on here because um, it, I knit it up in the last two weeks because it just went so quickly. Um, let me move over. I'm off center. Okay. Now I am more centered. Um, I have a Linto. <laughs> this, um, color is so hard to photograph. So if you've seen me post pictures of it, it's anywhere from like orange to brown, honestly. Um, but I just have the window open right now and I don't have my ring light on so that you can see what it looks like um, better. So I, if you watch my fall knitting plans video, I talked about wanting to make a lento with some yarn that I've had for a very long time. And I, I kept pulling it out. I think I talked about it all year because I'm trying to use it up and I didn't know what to use it for. It was a mix of Knitting for Olive Merino and Lang Surrey Alpaca. And I have some, sorry about the crinkling and the falling yarn. So this is what I used the Lang Surrey. Um, and then the Knitting for Olive is Plum Rose. Mm -hmm. Yes, Plum Rose, there's more on the ground. So I, um, I always remember where I get my yarn from. So I got this from U Fibers in Charlottesville two years ago. Um, my husband and son and I took just like a weekend trip up there for uh, like a little family family time. And we went to U Fibers and I got sweaters quantity of this. And then um, on Mother's Day, maybe last year, my husband and son took me to a, a local yarn shop, Freeman's, and I got this to go with it. And so I've been wanting to hold those together for a long time. And now, now I have. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I do have some left. So I had to go back and get an extra couple of these from the yarn shop. And I thought, like I, I was on the fence, like should I get one more? Am I, do I have enough? And I ended up getting this last one, which I don't, didn't need. And so I'm like, do I see if they can, if I can return it? Like, I don't want to return it for the money because I want to support them. It doesn't really matter that much, but I don't really want to have it sitting. Like it obviously like the money matters, but it was not very expensive. And so I'm not really concerned about that. I'm mostly concerned that I have to hold on to it. And I have no idea what I will make with just two of these. Usually like, I don't know, a, a, a scrappy kind of project. I'm not sure. And I also have a whole one of these and this to go with it. So I'm definitely like a little bit like, oh man, I wish I had used all of it. But I am not really concerned about holding on to this because I have so many fingering weight um, knitting for all of like one <laughs> ones. I don't know. And so I'll just add it to that if I ever make something striped. I also think this would definitely be enough. Oh wait, it says 250 meters. I think it would be enough for like a tank top. Um, and so at a looser gauge. <laughs> and so I maybe that I will make something next year because I really, really like this color. Um, so I'm more apt to hold on to this than to this because I just don't really know what I would do with this, but it's fine. I'm really happy with the sweater. Um, if you haven't made a lento before, it is a pattern by Line of Magazine. I think it's the owner of Line of Magazine made it. I'll stand up so you can see it. Um, I made it sort of full length because I wanted it to be kind of oversized and comfy and then the sleeves here. Um, and then I, I haven't posted any picture of this on my Instagram. I've been a little bit behind on, on Instagram lately 
um, sharing pictures. So <laughs> YouTube, you saw it first. Um, anyway, I, I'm very excited about it. It was my fall plans. So I think in that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be a last, like a last thing. And then, um, for my trip, I didn't know what to bring in. So I was like this, I'm going to bring this and I'm going to finish it. And, um, yeah, we had some, some plane rides, some car rides. And so I really, um, had some time to work on this. It has a very loose gauge and yeah, it's raglan. It's very straightforward. I actually have the magazine that it's in. Um, and so, yeah, I was working from pictures from the magazine. <laughs> um, but yeah, my finished lento. I have made another one. Um, I made one last year and I used it's a year alpaca that my parents got me from um, Lisbon and I love it. It was one of my most worn sweaters last year and so it could have been the yarn, it could have been the pattern, but I decided to make another one and I'm very excited about it. When I was working on it, it's definitely one of those projects that I like got very like focused on because I knew I could finish it quickly <laughs> versus my other projects that maybe take a little longer. Um, speaking of projects that I have recently finished and took a little bit longer, I don't have them here because I just mailed them, but I have a separate video um, about them where I talk in depth about um, Lucian Friends. And um, yes, a very, very special project, very sweet. I loved making them um, and it was a sample project. So if you haven't seen, I've been making the three animals from Lucian Friends as a sample make to send to La Mercerie and um yeah they were adorable <laughs> i finished them up like maybe two weeks ago and mailed them off and so i recorded a separate episode to talk all about them and it's not super long like maybe 15 minutes but since i don't have them here sadly i will direct you to that video because they are extra cute and adorable with their little clothes on all of that very cute <laughs> Okay, then the last finished object I have is something special for my son. He, um, we went together to the yarn shop and he picked out um, yarn that he wanted for a hat and um, I made it for him. <laughs> I don't think I shared this finished. I looked back at my notes and I hadn't seen it. So like it fits me, I think um, he can have it for a long time. Um, but I think like where he's at now, he could probably, could probably roll it twice and just wear it. Um, like this, which I think would be extra cute, <laughs> but he's very excited about it. And I think it's kind of the first year that he's like, oh, my mom made that for me. And like, it's really special. And I picked up, we picked up the yarn together and then I saw her making it. And then now I'm wearing it. <laughs> I hope it's just a simple, um, brioche and then has like these decreases on the two sides. Um, so I didn't use a pattern. I just uh there we go i didn't use a pattern it's just like a simple simple brioche hat and um i need to weave in the ends before he wears it but the goal is that he can wear it for a while because it is i think it's blue sky fibers um bfl so it should be really really sturdy and really warm and i do want him to have that for for a while um blue is his current favorite color and so um when he saw this he was just so thrilled the blue is a little bit lighter yeah then it's coming across back here but anyway yes a finished hat for him and i think he's really really excited to wear it this winter okay i have some really exciting progress now to show you this is my works in progress um progress on my going cardigan um this has i've been working on this for a long time it's been a long time and that's fine. Again, I'm fine with it. I always talk about how I'm not worried about this. I made in my head, I was like, this is going to be a long knit and I am comfortable with that. And that has been wonderful because I haven't felt pressured to finish it. Um, but I completed one of the front panels. Um, and it has you like seam before you block. And so I seam the shoulders, not the sides. Um, but so I seam the shoulders together and yeah, so it's starting to really actually look like a cardigan. <laughs> it has you do the button band at the same time. And so when it blocks, I, feel, I don't think it'll pucker like that. Um, but yeah, so I can kind of see what it's going to look like. And then I'm working on the second front panel right now. 
and it's the one with the buttonholes. So I already have a little buttonhole um, going on. The buttonholes are really big, and I posted on my Instagram stories that I'm gonna need to buy buttons. Usually, I just I have like a large collection of just like vintage or thrift thrift shop buttons that I usually choose from, but I don't have like one to one and a half inch buttons. I really don't think I have any um, enough that I would have like four of. And so I'm going to, I think I'm going to buy some and I asked for suggestions of where people buy their buttons. Cause I love to support like a small business or someone that makes their buttons or that kind of thing. And oh my goodness, there were so many incredible suggestions. Um, I'll share a couple of them and then if you have button suggestions because people were like really into it which was super exciting because I don't know a lot about the button world um so anyway I was looking at these and I'm like okay well will I be now planning my projects around the buttons that I want to use because maybe because these buttons were amazing so off the top of my head people suggested La Mercerie um which is kind of a yarn shop but they have a lot of beautiful buttons and very very unique looking and then I saw Holland Hoof, I think is the name. Um, I'll write it down, but oh my goodness, they have clay and wood. Those buttons are beautiful. Idle Wild Clay was another suggestion. Gorgeous. <laughs> they also have ceramic, um, I think is what, what it said, buttons. So I'll, I'll add some more down below in the, in the um, description box, but truly beautiful buttons. I was blown away and I don't know how I'm ever gonna decide. Um, anyway. I have a little bit of time. That's why I wanted to look now before I finish. <laughs> Obviously I still have the sleeves, so, um, but now I can like put this on like an actual, like, okay, well not really, but like kind of, I can see what it's gonna look like. So this will go to the back and then come across the front and it's gonna be a good length for me. It's really hard to see because I am short. Okay, there we go. So. The front is a little shorter right now because of the button band, but I promise it's the same rows. <laughs> and then we'll, I'll seam this. Yes. So it's getting there. It's starting to look like a sweater. I love, I love how this looks. Ah, so beautiful. Um, okay. So serious progress on that. Very excited. And I'm just kind of working on the um, front panel while I'm in between intense projects, I guess, um, or indecisiveness. <laughs> because I want to cast more things on, but I'm also paralyzed a little bit by indecision. And so it's really nice to just have this to work on and know that I am making meaningful progress on something that I really want to while still being stuck in the like, what do I cast on? <laughs> um, while still being stuck in like, what do I cast on next? I still have something to work on. So that has been wonderful the last couple of days. Something else I have on my needles, which was a very impulsive cast on, <laughs> and I think I might frog it, is another Tulsa tea. It's not the pattern, it's just me. Um, looking at it now, I like it okay. I don't know, I'm really struggling. So I started this on our flight to Denver because I um, do not like flying, and so it was nice to have something very, um, like, I really needed a focus um, to get the marker placements. It's a raglan construction, so I needed to get the marker placements and I needed to get the short row shaping and like all that. And so it was nice to have something very like intense to focus on versus the turbulence that we were experiencing. <laughs> um, but again, I don't know that I love it. Please tell me what you think. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Okay, so here it is. Um, it is another Tulsa tea, and the reason I cast it on impulsively is because this is the same yarn I used for my yellow one, but in purple. Okay, you can kind of see it there. So this is Autumn and, Ingo Autumn and Indigo fingering, um, local fingering, and I believe it's discontinued. And then I'm holding it, or I'm using stripes from, this is like a Knit Picks yarn that I, um, the end is white, <laughs> that I dyed with um, avocados. And so I wanted like a low contrast stripe, but I'm just not in love with the pink. And then I did a thick stripe down here to see if I like the thick stripes better. Um, and I don't really think I like either. I, I just like really don't know what to do. So it's just kind of sitting. 
if I took it out, I would probably just do it all plain purple because um, I wear a lot of just like plain colored t-shirts. And so this would be similar to that kind of um, look. Honestly, I have a plain purple t-shirt from Madewell that's like the exact same color that I wear all the time. I think I wore it on this trip. So anyway, it would be fine for me to make it just like plain and I'm not, you know, worried about that. But I'm just trying to decide like, do I want to go back and rip this out? I actually made a lot of progress on the flight. The flight was about three hours. And so it's only like three hours of work, but still I didn't really want to take it out, but not sure I love the low contrast of the purple and the pink together. I just don't know. <laughs> So I might just do plain purple or I might just set it aside for a long time until next summer when I can actually um, like think about summer knits more. Although I will say I've been talking to a lot of my knitting friends on Instagram and realizing that a significant amount of people in the Northern Hemisphere actually experience fall in the month of September kind of like blew my mind. I guess because I've lived in this area my whole life, I really just... Um, I don't know. I really just think about, sorry, I saw someone out the window and I was like, oh, do we have a new neighbor? Um, I really just think about like my personal weather, <laughs> my own Septembers and what they feel like for me. And September is one of the hotter, hotter months here where I live. Um, the last like week it's been, you know, August and September are both just really, really hot. And most of the pools are closed now because it's after Labor Day, but we're hitting record highs here. Um, I think the highs have been like 98, 99 Fahrenheit, but the real feel has been like 105 plus um, Fahrenheit. And so I think that's like 36 Celsius is what I calculated the other day. If that means something, I hope that's not incorrect. I don't want to make it seem like it's really hot. This is not like a hot Olympics where, you know, whatever. I'm just saying like, I, I forget that seeing people actually starting to cast on and wear their fall knits. I'm like, wait, some people experience fall in September? And this is, they're not just wishfully thinking as they drink their, you know, pumpkin drink that it's going to be cool. It's actually cool for them. And I'm just so happy for them. And I forget. And so when I see people and I comment, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And I'm over here and we're just trying to make it through <laughs> the afternoons. Um, and, you know, thankfully, I'm sure you heard the AC came on. We have all those things here. It's very normal for it to be this hot. Well, Okay, it's maybe not normal to be this hot, but like thankfully I have, you know, AC and we have water and we have all those things. Um, I am prepared for the heat, but not mentally. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, that was a side note. Uh, but let me know what your weather is like um, because yeah, I just, everyone talks about September being like sweater weather and I am like, yeah, yeah, it is in the house where the AC is running. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I was still be knitting for fall and winter because I'm having some wishful thinking lately. Okay, those are my things I've worked on since the last video. And now I'm going to share my acquisitions. So, um, I'll share a little bit about our trip. Basically, we, um, it's two of my, my dearest friends, one that I have known my almost entire life since I was like five. Um, and we have been best friends since then <laughs> and um, another dear friend from college that I met my freshman year and we have just been um, really good friends since then and just um, but she went to grad school and then my my dear friend from from home from you know life she moved away for college and anyway they both are back in town and have been for the last few years and so we've been able to like reconnect even over COVID um, and just do a lot of fun things and we started going to church together and so we just all have they become friends it's been really really special um and so anyway we were talking about a girl's trip for a very long time and this felt like a good time or there's never a good time and so we just said let's do it um and so we really just looked for like short i wanted a non-stop flight um so i wouldn't be super far away from from ollie and so we just kind of looked where where we interested we want to do some hike we want to do some city and so we flew into Denver and um, we all kind of picked one thing that we were like, this needs to be our one thing. I want to see this. And then after that, we can do whatever. So mine was going to Fancy Tiger Crafts. Um, they were sort of one of the first knitting shops I followed when I started back into kind of like um, more serious knitting, like six, 
or seven years ago. Um, and so that was my one thing I wanted to do. And then my other, my two friends, they both just wanted to go for like a day long hike. And so that ended up working out perfectly because they want to do the same thing. And so a few other things we did, we went to the Denver Botanic Gardens. Um, I studied horticulture in college and I worked at a um, botanic garden and I kind of concentrated in public horticulture. And so um, going to botanic garden is always amazing. And they also wanted to go. And so, yes, we spent like a very long time at the botanic gardens it was truly beautiful um they always are it's just amazing to see just beautiful beautiful gardens um and then we went to fancy tiger we did a lot of coffee shops um we went we spent the whole day hiking one day we eat a lot of the same like foods or like dairy free red meat free things like that and so it was very easy to find <laughs> um foods to eat and we went to some amazing places and that was wonderful and then we kind of just explored like the basic downtown denver stuff like the um, union station and going by the baseball stadium <laughs> and seeing like the capitol capitol building and all that so anyway it was lovely low-key everything went like as well as it could have we only missed like one bus transportation was free while we visited um so that was great. <laughs> um, yeah, everything just went smoothly. It was just very nice to spend time with, with friends. We made a lot of meals together at the Airbnb. Anyway, okay, this is not like a channel about that. This is about yarn. So I'll talk about my yarn, um, but also my, my dear friends. So I, Fancy Tiger, I got this yarn. This is Bolo um, by Rosa Pomar. Where's my other one? I got two colors. Oh, it ran away. And this color as well. So if you have followed my channel for any amount of time, I have definitely used this yarn before and this like brand. So um, yes, I that's what I'm making my Goen cardigan is out of Mondim, which is another one of her yarns. Um, I just kind of like to stick with yarns I've used and yarns I know. Um, especially when I am like buying a larger quantity, I just get nervous about a yarn I haven't worked with before. I have two sweaters out of Vovo. I have a tilled, which is purple. And then I have a pink one, which I did make while I was filming videos. And so it's on here somewhere. I made a, um, oh, I don't remember the name. <laughs> it's by Tet Besh as well. Oh, canvas, canvas. It was sort of like with a Brooklyn Twee kind of collaboration. So I have a pink cabled sweater out of this yarn and I just really like it um, a lot. And I also had some of the pink left. So I knew I had this at home. And so I got these two colors and I'd like to make a, can you see them together? Um, I'd like to make a color work sweater. So if you have a recommendation for three colors, <laughs> um, color work sweater, um, and then this is kind of like sport, sport to DK weight. Um, I would happily take suggestions. I've been on Ravelry just like searching um, by, you know, three colors and this weight and color work. And I, I haven't really found one that I really, really love, I guess. Um, I think I am more interested in like, Inten not intense, but like heavier color work. I guess I've read people say that where it comes like almost past the yoke. Um, I'm less of like a band and more of um, the whole yoke or past, or it could be all over. I don't really care um, because I know this yarn is like so sturdy. <laughs> it's a little, um, I've heard people say toothy perhaps. And so I have a feeling that it will make a wonderful color work sweater and that it will last. So if it takes me forever to make it, totally fine. <laughs> I am really happy about the contrast here because I was concerned about the pink and the white, um, but it looks great, I think, personally. <laughs> um, anyway, I I have seen the Saren sweater by Bloom Create. Now, here I am saying I didn't like the strip, and that is exactly what that sweater is, but it's okay. I So I do like that kind of wide band. Um, I like the Spring Fling by the Petite Knitter. Um, but I feel like I have seen, um, I feel like I have seen some color work sweaters that fit better than, than, um, that one. 
<laughs> like this Saren sweater, it looks really wonderful on all of her models. And so I'm just, that's one thing I'm nervous about since I don't knit a, a lot of yoke sweaters. That is one thing I'm a little nervous about since I have only made a few yoke sweaters, this being one of them, <laughs> is the fit. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I've seen like Marie Wallen. I haven't made any of her patterns. She has a lot of color work sweaters. Like this feels like perhaps I need to take a deep dive into like Fair Isle because I want this to be really beautiful and I'm nervous to use the, <laughs> I don't know, to just like make the wrong pattern and the colors and the yarn not stand out. And so I don't know what to do. This is the colorway Toffee. This is the colorway Lamb. And then this pink is light pink. So yes, these are my acquisitions from Fancy Tiger. And then I also got this little pen to commemorate. I love getting little pens, so I'll probably put this on a project bag. Oh, I can put it on this project bag to remind um, me of that. And then this will also remind me of just, um, just that lovely sort of um, restful healing time with my, my sweet friends. Um, okay. I think that's all. Is there anything else I want to say? Did I get enough yarn? Probably not, but I bought all of this. This will be the main color. I bought all of this that they had <laughs> and also all of this that they had. I probably could have asked if they had more in the back. I didn't even think of that, but now <laughs> I know that like Bobo is sold in a few other stores that I've been to and so I can order that online if I need to. That is another reason why I always get yarn <laughs> that I've used before is because I know that if I need more, I can buy more. Okay, that is all for my project updates. Um, very, very excited to get into the fall knitting. Um, a few podcast updates and just general Hannah G Knits updates. I have a sweater coming out next week, a new design, and so I'll probably do a um, special episode for that, like a design spotlight. Um, I have one for my last design I did and, and people were very kind about that. So I think I'll make another for that one. Um, and then after that, mm, it might be after that. I'm not sure. I think I'll have a little break in videos because um, my husband and son and I will be traveling to visit family. And so that means I might get some more yarn. But also, um, I don't think I'll have some videos for um, maybe the month of October. And so I know that's peak fall knitting time. October is just such a wonderful time. It's my favorite month um, of the year because it gets really cool here and the leaves change and all of that. So anyway, I may or may not have some videos for you. Anyway, um, just, just letting you know there's gonna be a little break um, in some videos and um, yeah, maybe I'll have some wonderful new yarn and finished objects to share with you in a couple of weeks. So I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting.